this one, I think it's a fairly simple question to do, especially if you look at it as a kind of a formula exercise, because um, when we are describing these rest registers in series and in parallel, in series, basically we are describing this one, two, three, and just to be complete, 100 ohm, uh, 2500 ohm, that's the 2.5 K ohm, and 5500 ohm. And uh, the formula for adding registers in series is simply um, adding up all the resistances, R1 plus, R2 plus, R3. So you just add it up, you get, oh, I guess I can just plug that in. Um, 8,100, um, well, not kilo ohm, 8.1 kilo ohm. And with the registers in series, I'm sorry, in parallel, that's uh, describing a setup like this. Uh, so here I'm drawing them like they are geometrically parallel. They don't have to be. What's important is that they are, uh, the voltages at one end are the same as the, or <laughs> voltages at one end, they have one value VA, and voltages at the other end, they have another value VA, B. And these three elements share the same voltages at those two ends. That's what makes them parallel. And the easiest way to do it is by just connecting them with the wire at one end and with wire at the other end. That's, uh, uh, that's probably the way you will almost always see in this class. Um, if you go into more detailed circuit analysis, especially involving more active circuits like OPAMs, then there are more, there can be more interesting situation where things don't look parallel at all, but involving something called virtual ground, then it can actually be parallel. Anyways, so if you have a setup like this, then um, maybe I should plug in numbers here because there is something informative about, something that's useful to know about adding registers in series and in parallel. That's a kind of a general um, intuition about circuits. So here the formula is um, pretty simple again, uh, although well, it is simple to write down. It's the simplest to write down when you write it in reciprocals. The one over R equivalent resistance for the registers in parallel is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. That's kind of algebraically the simplest form. Um, to solve it for actually the R parallel, it you know, you can do it, but I don't want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in the numbers of um, 1 over 100 plus 1 over uh, 2,500. And the calculator I'm using does the order of operation automatically. That's why I'm not putting parentheses. Depending on your calculator, you may need to, you know, use parentheses. Uh, 1 over 5,500. Okay, so that's the 1 over R parallel. So I need to take that, store into memory, and take the, recip oops, uh, take the reciprocal of that, recall from memory, to get the value. So I get 94.5 ohm. So in terms of kilo ohms, it's a 0 0.0945. Now, the reason I want you to actually do it is to highlight this uh, fact, which you might have noticed, or maybe you do now, is that when you add registers in series, the equivalent resistance you get, this is always greater than the any one of these resistances. Um, so, you know, 5.5 kilo ohm, that was the largest resistance and the equivalent resistance is guaranteed to be greater than that, you know, because it's all <laughs> addition. Uh, so maybe that part is not that surprising. I think the intuition about parallel circuits is sometimes the more useful and it doesn't come as quickly is that this equivalent resistance is always smaller than the smallest of these resistances. So the smallest one here is 100 ohm and the value here, you know, 94.5 ohm, that's smaller than this. 
And the impact of, you can almost always look at um, parallel resistances this way. You can look at it as, okay, what's the smallest one here? And you can see the other registers as providing additional paths that lower the total resistance even more. And um, how much impact that these have kind of depends. The smaller those values are, the more impact they have. Or put it the other way, <laughs> the larger these are, the less impact they have. Like this 5.5 kilo ohm register, like if, if that wasn't there at all, this value wouldn't change too much. So, uh, so that's a more of an intuition thing that maybe isn't as useful um, in this lower division ENM class. But if you do more circuit work, then you know it kind of helps to look at this and quickly know that their total resistance is actually going to be pretty close to 100. It's not going to be markedly different from 100. It's kind of that's a really when we talk about intuition, um, the biggest uh, usefulness of intuition is in uh, getting the correct answer quickly, much more quickly than you can do it through a detailed calculation.